it, it's really it's just the satanic influence that does away with the power of God. And in other words, uh, if you want to see his power, this is power. You're going to do a calamity and you're going to be stuck like that and then you can win more souls or you're going to die and through your death you're going to bring more people. That is not the power of God. The power of God sets men free. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we have to have our understanding un uh, open to the scriptures. Verse 46 says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, verse 49, I send the promise of my Father upon you. That's the Holy Ghost. Not there. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. Now listen to this, saints. He told his believers, his followers, who walked with him the last three years, who saw his miracles, who saw the storm steal, who saw him walk on water, who saw him raise dead people, who saw him bring Lazarus out of the tomb four days dead. These people, he said to them, he said, go and wait until you receive the power from on high. Now if anybody was able to be a witness, wouldn't you think they would be? Well, if you were thinking in just the natural, that it was just the natural man, then yes. But Jesus says, although you saw these things in the natural, I'm going to empower you to be a supernatural witness. Hallelujah. Effective, you might say. Are you with me? Sure. All right. Look over in uh, Acts. I'm about out of time here. Don't so long as we'll be going on. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Acts. Verse chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Verse 4. The assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Now here he goes into detail. Which, saith he, you have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you understand that once the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit was given out, then he's still out. He's still here. You don't have to tarry for him anymore. Now that was a teaching in the church for some years that we're going to go and tarry. And maybe some of you remember that. Go and tarry. People mean well in these teachings, but they they defer the blessing, let's put it that way, mm -hmm. until you get revelation. Because I don't have to go and tarry for the Holy Ghost. He's ready and waiting and willing now. Praise the Lord. But if I think I have to tarry, then I'll play the part until my faith activates and receives. Mm -hmm. You see that little future hesitation there? Mm -hmm. Well, the Holy Ghost has been poured out and ready and available and more than willing to assist each of us with supernatural power. Glory to God. Revelation knowledge, if you please. Verse 6, When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? They're still thinking natural. And he said to them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own time. <laughs> By the way, there's some book, y'all, that keeps coming out. And God sets a date for the return of Jesus. God remind him of this scripture. Hallelujah. I think he's reset it because it didn't happen the last uh, that happened the last few times he said it. How do people keep buying the books? I don't understand. 
You know, if it doesn't happen one time, maybe the second time you might say, well, you maybe miscalculate a little bit. I mean, if you were of that persuasion. But then three or four times, hey, come on, are we that stupid? Yes, we are. Quit buying the books. Quit giving him any credence. Don't even mention him in the newspapers. You know, as far as the doomsday is coming. And, but I hear them talk about it at work. They still think it's coming. Well, there is one coming, but it's not by that guy. That's right. Verse 8. Here it is. You shall receive power. Say power. Power. Ooh, glory. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So what are you going to get when the Holy Ghost comes on you? Power. power. And you shall be witnesses unto me. That's Jesus talking. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. That's some area, by the way. Some area on here. <laughs> and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Some of you got it. Some of you think of it. You'll get it later. <laughs> All right. So you have been empowered. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now, do you see the Holy Ghost when you get saved? Yes. Well, that's an age-old question, isn't it? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, you have, it's a work of the Spirit, so you have to have the Holy Spirit involved. Amen. Or you're back into this the letter. Yeah. Right? Amen. But there's more. That's what I'm going to point out. There's more. There's an experience here. He just called it the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5 it says, baptized. You were baptized with water, but now you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Right. So it's that particular experience that is different from just being saved. You can just be saved, and yes, you've been born of the Spirit, or you're not saved. All right, do you agree with that? Are you okay with that? So when you're born of the Spirit, you're saved. But you want to just stay like that? Or do you want to get everything God has for you? Everything. I want everything. everything. That's what I told Mama Jen at prayer meeting. She'll say, I was want... just thinking about watching you get baptized in the Holy Spirit one night. That's right. It was a Catholic charismatic prayer meeting in uh, the hills of San Bernardino Mountains. And she took me there and was snowing outside. And uh, I said, if there's more God, I want it. I want everything. Why would I rebel against that? Well, some people do, though. They, they do for many reasons. Mostly it's because of misunderstanding. They don't have understanding of, of what it is, and they have misconceptions. I thought, too, at first, before I met this precious lady back here, I thought, too, that you folks, when you came to church like this, that you rolled in the aisles with saliva out of your mouth. And, <laughs> I thought that's what you did in here. 